Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We're thankful today for God's goodness and his kindness. That's right. Good morning, Brother Donald Alexander. Amen. Sister Karen, God bless you. Sister Frankie, God bless you. Good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. Good morning. It's a wonderful day. Thank God we're saved. Thank God we're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ on this day. On this day. Hallelujah. I want to let you know, don't be weary. Don't be weary and well-doing. Don't give up. Don't quit. Amen. There is not just light at the end of the tunnel. There's Jesus at the end of the tunnel. And he's not just at the end. He's in the middle and he's with us. He's walking us through this. So be encouraged this day. Many things are going on. Many things are happening. And we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about some of those things today. Some of those key things, foundational things that we need to talk about and we need to address. And many times it's dealing with fear. Fear is that underlying condition. It's the underlying condition that we have to think about and fear uh, it just causes us to move in a different way and a different dimension so we're thankful good morning, today good, good morning, morning first good morning, lady good morning good morning good morning thanks to god good morning amen. pastor so we're good morning we're just welcoming everybody on the line amen, amen. good morning good morning sister maria come Coswell. on in here Good morning, Sister Joetta. Good morning, Sister Be Johnny. Be encouraged today. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. Amen. This is Thankful Thursday. Good yes, morning, it Sister is. Lolita. Good yes, morning. It is. Sister Rebe Gardner, God bless you. Good morning, One Sister week Sharon from Thanksgiving. Riddell. Good morning, good yes. morning, good morning, good morning, Brother Amen. Smith. Not God bless wait. you guys. Well, thank you, Brother now. Wilford. Yes, yes. Thankful, 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 thankful and grateful. Yes, it's the Lord's Watkins. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Brother Wilford Jones. God bless you guys. Coming on here strong. Amen, amen, amen. It is 8.02 now. Yes, we thank you. We thank you for joining us for yes. Thankful Thursday. And as most of you know, um, on Fridays, we rewind and recap. So those of you who got the constant contact, who got that message that we are having Fearless Friday. That's every Friday we rewind and recap. All right, Sister Sheila. God bless you, Sister Dolores Sturgis. Sister Amen. Leslie Mitchell. Sister Sabrina Lee. God bless you. Sister Lisa Mathis. Sister Lisa Kendall. Sorry. Um, Michelle, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen beautiful fall day. Sister Lasagna Shavers, God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We're going to put it down just a little bit where it's not on our chins. All right. Amen. Here we go. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Sister Sharice, Sister Nisha, God bless you guys. Good to see you coming on this morning. This thankful Thursday morning. And we're going to put a little light on the subject. Amen. There we go. Sister Valerie Byers. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Tell everybody we said praise the Lord. Miss Janet. Miss you guys. All right. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, saints of God. As you're coming on the feed, um, you see Brother Wilford sharing. Sister Lily Hill, God bless you, good morning. Go ahead and start sharing the feed. Go ahead and start sharing um, the morning manna live stream on Facebook. Share it to your friends. Share it with your friends. Amen. Share it with your family members, share it with your um, church members, share it yes. with your yes. um, saints of God. You're watching all over the country. Sister Bridges, God bless you. All right, Sister LaRonda, 
um, Summer Stewart. <laughs> God bless you. Look at that Facebook page, girl. You, you got it going on, all that food. Amen. God bless you. Good to have you guys coming on, Sister Dorothy Jackson. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Amen. Start sharing. Share to your own timeline. Time line. Sister Beverly, God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Rose Harshaw. Good morning. Yes, share the message. Share. We've been, this, this whole week, um, the Lord has been really impressing upon us to share because every... Every message that we have talked about this week has an element of sharing it, element of witnessing, an element of telling your testimony, an element of going and um, letting people know, Sister Kendra, God bless you, what God has done for you. And even in our today's text, there's an element there as well. So, so I think that's a word for the week. Sister Neesley Carissa, all right, God bless you. Good to have you joining us. Amen. Brother Scotty, good morning. And so we're going to see that Sister Shavers, Sister Phyllis Simmons, God bless you for coming on this morning. Go ahead and start sharing with friends, family, and loved ones. Cookie Man is on the screen. Yes, do it to you. on the prayer line this morning. Bre um, Sister Brenda Ames, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, you guys, sometimes you come up and it says, bring you on camera. I would love to bring some of you guys on camera, but I know you probably say, I'm not ready, first lady. I'm not camera ready. <laughs> All right, Sister Brittany from Tennessee. All right, God bless you. Sister Rhonda, Mother Chandler, God bless you. Yes, Good yes. to see you on the line this morning. Absolutely. Sister Loretta Cotton, God bless you guys for coming on in here strong. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Amen. So we have a wonderful lesson today. Getting ready to go into that lesson. Um, get your Bibles out. Get your tablets out. Get your um, smart devices ready. So that we can go on into our text for today. Come this is a paper tiki ready. Good morning, yes. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's a very powerful lesson today, First Lady. Mm -hmm. And not only is it powerful, it's relevant. And we mm -hmm. said it so much because God sends us a word for where we are. It, it wouldn't make sense to send us something that was not applicable to us mm -hmm. in, a time of, in a time of emergency. So that's God's word is always relevant. And there's a relevant word. There's a rhema word from the Lord. Yes. So we're going to talk about something today, and you see it on 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 the Facebook Live, the subject there is don't fear religious pressure. Don't fear religious pressure. And we got two passages of scriptures in the Gospel of John. John, and we're going to uh, read those for you. But don't fear religious pressure. Now, the one thing that sometimes people don't understand, the religious pressure in America is, is connected directly to uh, political things. And we have to understand that mm -hmm. there is a connection between uh, the religious pressure and political things in this country. It was it was the same way in Jesus' time. You remember the Herodians? They were a religious group, but they took on the name Herodians because of the King Herod. Mm -hmm. And they yeah. were more in tune to please him than they were to please God. Mm -hmm. And and they gave Jesus much, much, much problems. When he, when Jesus came into the world, uh, it was the Herodians and the Pharisees and the Sadducees that gave him incredible problems. So that's going, to, that's going to be like that. Nothing is going to change that. Nothing is going to change the religious peer pressure because that's what Satan does. He knows the best way to deceive the church is to infiltrate the church and act like the church. Mm -hmm. So if you want to deceive somebody uh, to make them think you somebody else, you got to look like them. Think about that. You got to you got to look like them. You can't you cannot be so drastically different from them that you cannot deceive them. So that's what Satan is doing. This will always be here until the Lord comes back, and He's going to separate the wheat from the tariff. He's going to do that. He's going to separate. So uh, and a tariff looks like wheat, and there's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. It's deception. Mm -hmm. Is deception, mm -hmm. and you got you got folks that are kind of like that. What that lizard, that whatever, that chameleon, whatever it, it lands on, it becomes that color. So this has been Satan's plan from the very beginning. The Bible says he has transformed himself 
into an angel light. So we're going into a study, and I want you to keep that in mind that in America, that our political political views and, and our theology is usually based on, on, on that, and the devil will infiltrate that, and he will use that, and he's using that to deceive many people. But just want you to know uh, Thanksgiving is coming up, and want you, as we should always be, be thankful, but want you to be safe. Want you to be safe. Uh, yes. Yesterday was another record. It's over, over, uh, over one person in America dying every minute now from COVID-19. And we're in the midst of incredible deception. Mm -hmm. Understand that in the midst of incredible deception, in the midst of all the people that are dying, we're right at right at a quarter of a million people. That's a lot of people. Two hundred and fifty thousand people is a lot of people. But there is such a denial. There's so many people that believe it doesn't exist. It's it's not a problem. But we see people changing, and that's a good thing. We see governors of states that are changing. People that used to mock COVID nineteen now they're in the forefront saying, "Hey, we got to do something," because when we see the hospitals are filling up, then we know this ain't just some test. This is real. This is real. Not just hospitals, but the morgues and the morgues filling up. All of that is going on. So the, today's lesson is very, 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 very important because when Jesus came, it wasn't the Romans. It, it, it wasn't them that gave him so much trouble. It was not the Greeks. It was the religious people of his day. And you have to understand that that is how deception works. If the devil going to deceive us, he's not going to deceive us with, with, a, with a pitchfork, a red tail, and horns on his head. Mm -hmm. He's going to deceive us with a Bible in his hand. Now, you, mm -hmm. you ought to make note of that. Okay. So today's lesson, we're talking about don't fear religious pressure, religious pressure. So don't fear that. So, First Lady, you're about ready to take off and so, move and go. Right before we go, this is November 19th. I yes. want to say happy birthday. Shout out to both my daughters, my oldest daughter and my youngest daughter, Candace Marie and Charity Denise. Today is their birthday. Yes. Woohoo! Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday. Yes. We want to say happy birthday to our daughters um, on today, both born on the same day, six, six years, years apart. apart. So God bless you, Candace. We love you. God bless you, Charity. We love you too. Yes. Happy birthday from mom and dad. Love we love you. you. Mm, love you, love you to love life. You. Love you Amen. to life. We Amen. Text Amen. them early this morning, yes. five something. Let them know happy so, birthday. So Wonderful, happy birthday. beautiful daughters. Yes. Thank God. God. We wouldn't us. trade y'all for any any Amen. anybody else or Amen. anyone else Amen. so we are very thankful the lord has blessed us uh, as a Amen. family and Amen. uh we got other daughters we got two more sister jill, jill and sister and cassie, cassie. Yes. Amen. so god has blessed us and we're going to dive into this and, and understand the relevancy of this that's i mean we don't make it applicable to us the bible's written to make it up written to us it was written for us mm -hmm. it's written to people of that time but it's written for the church so first lady let's dive into this religious pressure it's a lot of reading we, so. it's, it's, we, we're not going to read all this but we're going to okay. give you the scripture text so that you can go back and read it in its context because um, it's hard to just jump in right there at that specific um, key verse without knowing what transpired before that and how we came to this point so we're going to give you this text, write it down, make a note, so you can go back to it, but then we'll only read segments of it, okay? So, the first um, scripture that we want to give you is in St. John chapter 7, verses 1 through 13. And so, if you guys can help us with it today, Cherry's off on her birthday. She's not, I don't see her operating on the, the feed for X Ministries. Someone can put that up. Put that scripture up, St. John chapter 7, verses 1 through 13. Um, she's normally on the feed for us, um, operating as Acts Ministries, but she's not on there today. It's her birthday. <laughs> so, someone put that on the screen for us. And we're going to read 
um, verses 11 through 13, but write down or put on the feed 7, 1 through 13. Thank you, Sister Lolita. God bless you. Okay, so we're going to read actually verse 11 through 13, and our key verse will be in verse 13, okay? Um, and then our second scripture will be St. John chapter 9, verses 1 through 23. 1 through 23, and there we will um, do some sporadic reading. We'll come to that in just a minute, but let's read the first passage of scripture because we're dealing with this don't fear religious pressure is our subject. Don't fear religious pressure, okay? All right, it says the um, beginning of verse 11, it says, Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. For some said, He is a good man. Others said, Nay, but he deceiveth the people. Howbeit, no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. That's our key verse right there, yes, verse 13. Yes, yes. No man is, speak openly of him for fear of the Jews. Fear of the Jews. Now, when it says fear of the Jews, it's talking about the religious uh, foundation of that day. Uh, you know, this is, a, this is within the Jewish community. It was a theocracy. That mean that it was it was governed by uh, religious views and so forth. They're under the rule of the Romans, but within their communities, and nobody spoke openly about Jesus, for they feared the Jews. Now, what kind of fear is this? It wasn't so much a fear of being killed, but it was a fear of being alienated, a fear of being ostracized, a fear of being talked about. You know, we, right now, you know. In America, you certain things you see and you get attacked on Facebook, you get attacked on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, there is there is this there is this fear, this fear, and and fear has permeated our country, our leadership. There is this fear in America like we've never seen it before, and it's, it is a dimension of peer pressure fear, like this country has never experienced before. So so here here here's Jesus. The son of the living God. Here's Jesus. And and he's here. And people are afraid to acknowledge him. Mm -hmm. Now he's healing the sick. He's yes. raising the dead. Yes. He's doing all these things. And yet it's still. Because <laughs> of their religious institution. Mm -hmm. They're afraid to acknowledge him. That's Now that's. Brothers and sisters. You, you, you're talking about. You talking about an insult? You 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 talking about uh, the very Lord of Glory on the earth, doing all these wonderful things, and yet and still because of somebody else's view, somebody else's viewpoint, even though they know truth. Mm -hmm. See, Nicodemus came to him at nighttime. Nicodemus came to him at night. Even he was part of the Sanhedrin. The Bible says Nicodemus and and Joseph and Matthew were secret disciples. They were secret disciples. You know, you know why they were secret? Because they was afraid to talk out loud. First lady, she coined that phrase, sin of silence. Sin of silence. So, so here, these people, can you imagine the Lamb of God? Can you imagine the only begotten Son of God, the Prince of Peace? He's on the earth. And I can't really show him how I really feel because I'm afraid of what somebody else is going to say. And the person they're afraid of is the very people that should be worshiping God, that said they are a worshiper of God. And Jesus says that to the Jews. He says, you, he says, you call God your father. You know, you say he's the one you worship, but you seek to kill me. Right, right. So, so it is no different today. We have the same thing that is going on. Uh, when we when we look at uh, what is happening here, so there's this great fear, yeah. great religious fear. Uh, they fear being persecuted, persecuted to the point of being uh, alienated. Now they didn't really have the right to execute folks. That's why they took Jesus to Pilate. Uh, they weren't supposed to do that. They did illegal stuff. Can you imagine that? These are religious people. They was cutthroat. Jesus called them hypocrites. He called them snakes. Vipers. Vipers. That's what Jesus called the religious leadership of his day. Mm -hmm. 
You know, he called them vipers because he saw what they were doing. They was calling right, wrong, and wrong, right. And they were into uh, prestige and even more so into money. Yes, and so we see, we see he he's doing all these miracles and they, they know. So at so one point they say he's casting out devils by the prince of devils, Beelzebub. They're calling him Beelzebub. When, when you begin to label and call things that are righteous and holy and just and good, when you begin to call right wrong and wrong right, yes, that, that's, that's a bad place to be in. They, they, in. In some of the translations, they say, well, he's a good man. And then others are calling him a fraud. And some are calling him a wonderful man. He's doing great things. And, they, and others will say he's duping the people. You know, Proverbs 29 and 25, you know, um, says the fear of man brings a snare. When you begin to fear man more than you fear God, you're fearing the religious um, pressure, the repercussions and the persecution that would come from these religious re leaders because they had already, we're going to get into St. John, they had made some rules and they had done some things because Jesus' crowd was bigger than their crowd. Jesus' um, following was bigger than their following. They got jealous, they got envious, and they began to do things. And if people would openly um, confess him and follow him, they had already made some laws and some rules to put you out of the synagogue, yeah. to excommunicate you, to kick you out, to boot you out. There was going to be some repri reprisal. They, the intimidation there from right. the religious leaders was so great, and the pressure there was so powerful that even people that knew right wouldn't right. speak up because right. they were afraid of the the repercussions that would come from this religious group of leaders. And so it says, they, how be it, no man spake openly of, of Jesus because of the fear of the Jews, not just Jews all, all over. They're talking specifically about the religious Jews of the day, those Her Herodians, those Pharisees, those Sadducees, those those leaders and doctors of the law, those scribes, those people. Listen, the Pharisees and the Sadducees didn't even like each other. They didn't even get along, but they even grouped up and 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 you know got together to be against Jesus because of the miracles and the signs and the wonders he was doing. People that don't even like each other. When they, when they find something common to, to dislike you about, they will come together and Aaron get together and, 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 and you know, um, come against you. That's how they did Jesus. And, and earlier, Jesus says in this same text, he says to his brethren, this is his, his half-brother. This is the, the sons of Mary and Joseph. Jesus is not the son of Joseph. Jesus is the son of God. So we see when he's talking to them to come down to this feast, to come down to the to um, the the temple, to come down to the Feast of Tabernacles where this celebration is going on, where they look to kill him, where they're looking for him, where um, people will not speak openly about him. When, when he says to his brother, he says, you know what? The world cannot hate you. And he's talking to his, his natural right. half-brothers. The world cannot hate you, but it hateth me because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Yes. And he tells them, you going up to the feast. You know, I cannot go up, you know, to the feast right now. My time is not yet full. He, he tells them, you going up now because I'm not coming up right now. He, he knows that they're seeking. In verse number one, he says that, that he would not walk in jury. Because the Jews sought to kill him. And, and they sought Jesus' life, not just to accuse him, but they, they wanted to kill him. And people want to do away with you. The devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Yes. And that spirit is still alive. Very much so. The people, these Jews are dead. But that spirit still lives on. And so they were afraid of getting in trouble with the Jewish leaders, the intimidation that the Jewish leaders um, were putting upon all the people who confessed Jesus and that, that fear of reprisals from, from them, the repercussions and, and the persecution, that, 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 the excommunication and all that that's going to transpire because if anybody spoke up in, in the Lord's favor, that, you know, 
they 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 rejected you they excommunicated you yes and, and they didn't have anything to do with you and and and, and you can see that is, is the spirit of our day mm -hmm. the spirit of our time so they they knew truth they knew jesus they saw what he did yes now you just think about that they saw what he did and they still wouldn't believe they saw with their own eyes and they still wouldn't believe. That is that is an incredible place, incredibly awful place to be. But that's where we are today. You can see it, you can look at it with your own eyes and still refuse to believe it. So so because of this, because of this, this amount of pressure in Jesus' time that pressured the people and even put pressure on them to uh tell Pilate to crucify the Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, we'll get to that later on uh, as we're studying the word of God. But the fear of the Jews, I want you to say, this, this is the religious establishment, the, the leaders of the Jews, that they had that kind of influence. And when people have that kind of influence, it, it was, it was, it was a, a type of brainwashing. It was a type, it was a cultic type of setting where, Folks just fell in line, even though they 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 knew right, uh, they wouldn't do right. And 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 the problem with that is, after a while, the Bible talks about being reprobate, that that you lose your ability to choose right from wrong. When you won't acknowledge it, then you lose that ability. So there's this incredible fear of the Jews. But it's it's another it's another passage of scripture that talks about the same thing, mm -hmm. and we wanted to put them together. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's in St. John chapter 9. First lady is going to read some excerpts mm -hmm. from uh, verse 9. And you're going to see we got, the same, we got the same situation here going on. But there are some unique differences here. That There are some, there are some good things here that we see from, from one of the individuals that would not allow them to, to brainwash him. Would not allow him to allow them to pressure him into telling a lie. Mm -hmm. So this is St. John chapter nine. Uh, let's do some sporadic reading. Um, we'll start with verse one to get you to understand what the, the back line or the backdrop of this story is. It says, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him saying, master who has sinned, this man or his parents that that he was born blind. And Jesus answered, Neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. And so let's drop down to um, verse number uh, 8. It says, The neighbors therefore, and they which before had seen him, which was blind, said, Is this... He that sat and begged, and some said, this is he, and others said, he is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, how were thine eyes opened? And he answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay, clay, and anointed mine eyes, and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam, and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. And let's jump down to... Um, Number 13, it says, They brought him to the Pharisees that aforetime was blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. And again, the Pharisees asked him how he had received his sight. And he said unto them, He put clay upon my eyes, and I watched and do see. Therefore, says some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. Let's jump down to verse number um, 21. It says, but they asked him again, by what means, uh, this is his parents. They're asking his parents now. By what means he now seeth, we know not. And who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him. He shall speak for himself. For these words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already 
that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Yes. So this is a man who's born blind. He sits and he begs and everybody knows he's born blind. They know this is that man. And then when they see him walking around seeing, they're like, ain't that him? Right. It looks right. like him. Yes. And they, the other said, he just looks like him. It couldn't right. be him because right. this man can see and the other man couldn't. But then he speaks up for himself and he says, I am he. And that's what I said. It's an element of that testimony, even in this passage of scripture today, where this man has been blessed and healed by God. He's, he's now telling people. He's telling the crowd. He's going to tell the, the religious leaders, um, his parents. Everybody know he's telling what great things God has done for him. But there was a division because Jesus did this on the Sabbath day and he did many miracles on the Sabbath day for which they accused him of not being of God or doing um, things by um, the devil because he did things even on the Sabbath. He, he performed miracles, the withered hand, the, the woman who was bowed over. There were many miracles that Jesus did on the Sabbath and this is one of them. And so they accuse him and there's a division there. So when the division happens there's there's others who say listen no man this nobody can do what he's doing and be of the devil no one can do these miracles except god be with him no one can do these miracles that he's doing and so his parents get down to the to when they are called in by the religious leaders that the religious leaders call his parents in and begin to question them even after they question the man the man has given them all the answers. Right. They question the man again. <laughs> He's, they're going to question him again. But they question his parents. And his parents, they don't want to be kicked out of the synagogue. They don't want to be ostracized. They don't want to be cast right. aside. They don't want to be excommunicated. They don't want to be ex expelled, shunned, and kicked out. So so they kind of beat around the bush here. And and when they're asked the question, they, they say, He's of age. He's grown now. He's a mature man. He can answer for himself. They say, this is our son. We know this is our son. And we know he was born blind. But right. how he sees now, we don't know. We can't tell you. He's of age. Ask him. Right. So so they said that only because they were afraid. And that's what we're talking about. Fear of religious pressure. They're afraid. They know the truth. Mm -hmm. But they're afraid because the truth if they declare it, it's got consequences with it. Mm -hmm. So they keep asking this man the same thing. And they're doing this because they want him to change. <laughs> they put pressure on him to change. They keep asking him the same thing. Well, he's going to get tired of them asking him the same thing. This man has this man has some backbone. He has some courage. Now, apparently, he's been blind all his life. So, you know, maybe he didn't know the structure. He didn't know everything that was should, he should be saying and doing since he had been born blind, but they keep pressuring him yeah. and he keep telling them the same thing. Now they keep asking him because we want you to change. We want you just to line up. We, you know, we want you to see what we're saying. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to influence you to back off of the truth. Right. And, and we're saying a lot of that. We're, right. we're saying, and, and I want you to understand the very foundation, the very root of that is religious. It is, is religious views, is religious views, how we view certain things. And so you, you, you have all of that working right here. And so the parents, they're afraid. See, they don't want to be alienated. Mm -hmm. See, that, that's a horrible right. thing to be, to be alienated from the people that you've known and the people yet you agree with and the people you worship with and all of that. That's some ties that the people you go out to dinner with, the people you've known all your life, you, you want to come in alignment. You don't want no friction there. So sometimes we bend towards uh, things that are not true. We bend towards untruths. And here they keep asking the man and the parents. Now the parents knew what was up. Now they asked the man one time too many and he, he didn't give the proper response. He let them know. He said that he... he begin to tell them that why why are you doing this why you keep pushing why you keep pressuring this situation this was a good thing that was done he said he said nobody's ever known 
a man born blind mm -mm -mm. to receive his sight. So he, here's this man begin to teach them, yes. begin to talk to them. Now, this is the Sanhedrin. These are the religious intelligentsia, if you will, of the day. These are the people that 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 make make rules and laws that they didn't follow, but they did it for other people. So as they begin, as they begin to talk here, this man begin to say, wait a minute. Now we know. He said, now I, I don't know about I don't know about all that what you're talking about. But he's a sinner and, and, and he's a false prophet. The man said, I don't know about all that. Uh -uh. But I, I do know this. I once was blind. Yeah. But now I see. Absolutely. <laughs> he said, now you, you're not moving me from that. <laughs> Uh, I was blind. Now I can all see. All my life, you can keep on asking me. You can you can threaten me. There's a <laughs> there's a lot of threatening going on right now. And, and, there's and, a spirit of intimidation, a spirit of is, bullying, a, a spirit of threatening going now. Where where people that that are good people are afraid, mm -hmm, afraid. Mm -hmm. They're afraid. They're, to, they're being shut down, and, and that's that sin of silence. They they're they're afraid to to open their mouths and say what thus saith the Lord. They're afraid. To, to even say, even if I can't explain it, I know it's wrong. I know what's happening is wrong in our country. I know what's happening is wrong in our government. I know what's happening is wrong in the White House. I know, but I can't say anything for fear of uprising of the, the people around me, the comrades, the, the constituents, the people who are on my level. The, this sin of silence, and, and I, I saw your message, Avery. I saw, you know, and, and I said something to the pastor about that on yesterday. I said, you know, it's, it's really hard to, to understand and to grip how um, people will not say anything, and they know this is wrong. Yeah. How, how you will call stuff that's reality fake. How you will call um, stuff that's good bad. How you will call evil good. How you will call, good, evil. How you will call things that are wrong right. Yes. And, and to, to do that with no um, sense of, 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 I would say, guilt, guilt or shame yes. or, or, or any of that. And, and to, to be in this, 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 this system, th there is, That's what it is. This, there is a strong delusion. That's it. That's there it. is a strong delusion going on right now. And when you're not in tune with God, or you're just following people, or you're following just churches, you're just following um, the the status quo. Yes. You, when you're following things and you you don't have direct relationship with God, th there's a separation happening here. There's a separation happening in the spiritual realm because right. everybody right. that's claiming to be His is not His. Right. Everybody that's saying Lord, Lord. The Lord does not know him, does not know them, and it's been exposed. And yes, it's, it's coming. It's coming because if you prophesy, if God says something, it's got to come to pass. So yes. if God didn't, if, if it doesn't come to pass, you was a false prophet in that area. Mm -hmm. You you missed it. You mm -hmm. missed it. Mm -hmm. There's no other way to look at that. There's no way to look at that. God ain't flipping no coins in heaven. God knows the end he's, from the beginning. He's not a 50 50 guy. No, if, if, no. if this don't happen, it, I'm telling you, this was a 50 50 dream or 50 50 vision or 50 50 prophecy. That. That's, 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 that's not God. Like that. God is absolute. He's, yes. he, he already has seen the end from the beginning. He's not looking through a glass darkly. We are. He already knows. He's already standing in eternity. He already understands all this. So, so we, as the people of God, it is a time to pray. Because when we look at yes, scriptures, and this yes, is this is. is why we study the Word of God, mm -hmm. there's such a strong delusion during the time Jesus is here mm -hmm. that they end up crucifying. How you Savior. crucify? How do you crucify the Creator? The creatures mm -hmm. crucify the Creator. How can the Creator be here and you not recognize Him? The Bible says He was in the world. We're all made by Him, the very one who made you, but the world knew Him not. So, so you see what was influencing this what was influencing this move was the pressure of being alienated mm -hmm. the pressure of being uh excommunicated so even yes. the parents they don't want to say nothing now, yes. the, the man went on because he got tired of them asking him he got tired he, and he and then he asked them do you want to be his disciples? Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, you saying I'm. You saying we Moses. You know, you that fellow disciple. We don't know where he come from, 
And, and he was trying to tell her, we can't deny. Now watch that. We cannot deny reality. Right. right. Now, now see, that's right. you got to work real hard to deny reality. You got to close every eye. You got to stop up your ears to, to, to deny realities. Because mm -hmm. when you look at this, the only reason why they got to this place is because of their convictions. What 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 they believe. Now, it wasn't a word. They, I mean, they have twisted it. They have made it the way they wanted to. And, and because of their belief system, they end up crucifying Christ. Wow. How do you get to the point you seeing him do miracle after miracle and they would come and see him do miracles and get angry. Mm -hmm. How do you get angry with, in somebody the midst get of somebody healed. getting healed, somebody, somebody getting, getting delivered. delivered? And they sat there and they saw it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They saw it. And mm -hmm. instead of getting glad like all the people, they was angry and, and, and they would get offended. You know, the disciples even came. They, <laughs> they said, don't you know that the yeah. Pharisees was offended when you, when you said that parable? Because they knew that it was about them. Right. Right. That. So didn't you know that it, they said the Pharisee, you offended the Pharisees. And Jesus said, <laughs> then watch Jesus. Because uh -huh. you know what? J Jesus was the truth. You ain't going to, yes. you know, you weren't, they weren't going to be able to push him around. Mm -hmm. Now, if he just would have agreed with them, he'd have been, hey, they'd have made, they'd have made him one of them. That'd been fine. But Jesus wasn't going. Jesus is truth. Mm -hmm. And so, so when, when. They couldn't sway him. They couldn't change him. They couldn't make him come over to their side because their side was corrupt and their mm -hmm. side was polluted. Jesus told the disciples, they are blind guides. Yes. Leave them alone. Mm -hmm. He told his disciples mm -hmm. that. His disciples were saying, well, you know, we kind of offended them. We, we, we don't want to offend them. No, 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 no. We're talking truth now. Right. We're talking truth because you can't get in a place where what you have seen, what you have heard, what you know to be reality, to move into something that is not real, mm -hmm. to move into an alternative reality. That's a bad place to be. They had to go there to be able to crucify the Lord of glory. But this man, he began to talk up. Mm -hmm. He said, you want to be his disciples? <laughs> he can see now. He said, you want to be his disciples? See and, now, and now, he has unmuted himself. Yeah, he, he has unmuted he, himself. He has unmuted himself, and he is now speaking. Think about this, the first lady. As long as he was blind, they let him stay in the church. Mm -hmm. And does you can be uh -oh. blind, you can don't don't say nothing, you can come to church. But once you start talking, once you start unmuting yourself, once, once you start once, seeing, once you start seeing, then then there's another story. People want to put you out, excommunicate you, boot you, expel you, shun you, and kick you to the curb. So he, he was as long as they was there. As long as they're there, and, and you know, blind. See, you can lead a blind person anywhere. You can lead a blind person anywhere. You can lead a blind person off a ditch, mm -hmm. off a cliff, rather. You can lead a blind person anywhere, and they'll just follow. But now his eyes open, and he says, wait a minute. <laughs> and because the, because the blind, wait a minute, Because yeah. the blind person can't see. He you, can't see that you're blind, too. We can't, he said, you can't, we can't deny this. I, I, he said, this I know. I once he was, was blind. blind. Yes. I don't know what all you talking about. He said, whether he be a sinner or no. He said, I don't know all that you talking mm -hmm. about. I don't know about all that. I know one thing. Yes. I know one thing. And one thing I know is that I was blind. But now, I see. Yes. And he wasn't he letting go of that truth. That was truth. Mm -hmm. he, they tried to move him off that truth. So they came back. How did he give you a sight? That's when he kind of... He kind of lost it a little bit. And mm -hmm. then he said, he asked them, do you want to be his disciple? I done told you already. I don't, I don't need to tell you again yeah. what you heard me the first time. And it's, my story's not changing. And since My and testimony's since, not changing. And since he wanted to see, they put him out. Mm -hmm. The Bible says they mm -hmm. cast him out. Yes. Disfellowshipped him. Excommunicated him. Mm -hmm. They put him out. Because now he could see. That, that right, is, right. that's enough right there. I mean, first lady, I mean, just think about that. That's enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we could go in and get off Facebook right now. I mean, just think about that. As long as he couldn't see, he was a good church member. Uh -huh. But then when he started seeing, then he became a bad church member. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Because he started looking at reality. This is the reality. All that Jesus was doing. It was the Bible says they're will willingly, willfully, 
ignorant. ignorant. I choose not, not to, to believe. Know. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I choose to block the truth. I choose not to deal with the truth. That this is, this is, this is, this is where we are, and and because of that fear, people was quiet. And, and I'm gonna say this because as I watched this on television when with the George Floyd thing and it first happened and one of the things that one of the renowned pastors said if I speak against this if I preach against this um, I might lose my following I might lose the backing I might lose my prestige I might lose um, my, father's my, fa my father's church I might lose the people in it won't follow me anymore they won't listen to me anymore they they will leave and go somewhere else they the money and the finances that are coming in will stop and people are are fearful they won't speak up because of finances they won't speak up because of fortune and fame they won't speak up because of um my my, my church might downsize it might go to people who really believe yes, yes. versus people who um have a stigma and who have a a a a social gathering and so a lot of those people who are who are in this facility or in this church or in this congregation they might leave because I, I began to preach on this truth yeah and the thing about it is we saw pastors get fired uh -huh. that start preaching that black lives matter you know yes. black lives matter you know and, and and they got fired for that you know why because pressure yes Pressure. Yes. Pressure. Pressure. You you, mm -hmm. you gotta understand that. We don't like that. And one thing they hated about Jesus is the truth. Jesus told them the truth. Now they stoned Stephen. Mm -hmm. They liter literally the Bible says they they gnashed on him. That Stephen they, they was gritting their teeth because Stephen said he went back and started telling them their history. He went all the way back and he said, You know what? Just like your fathers, you've always been stiff-necked. You've been a stiff-necked people. Not only did Stephen tell them that, Moses told them that. So whenever they went back to that, and the Bible said they, they, they gnashed upon him with their teeth, and, and they ran upon him, and they took him outside of the city and stoned him to death. The truth, the truth, the mm -hmm. truth. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that when Jesus came into the environment, the reason why they wanted to kill him is because, not for sin, because he mm -hmm. says that, he says, which one of you can convict me of sin? Which one of you mm -hmm. can say I have sinned? And, and, and Everybody time, was quiet. And another time he says, for which one of these good works do you want to kill me? Right. Which miracle that I've done do you want to kill me and stone exactly. me? Exactly. Wh which one? Exactly. Because, because he didn't do any wrong. He didn't do any evil. But yet and still because of the truth. When he went home to Nazareth, first lady, and, and they are looking at him and they enjoyed his wonderful words that he spoke mm -hmm. but but then he told him the truth you know he says you sit in here you saying okay when is he gonna start doing the miracles like he did in other places mm -hmm. you grew up here boy you need to be doing some miracles at home you're doing miracles everywhere else mm -hmm. and and then he be, then jesus began to tell him you know he went back in history well folks don't like history mm -hmm. i mean you can paint history the way you want to paint it or try to forget it Wow. You know, you can say it's a necessary evil, whatever you want to call it, but evil is evil, and all evil got consequences. Mm -hmm. So he he went back mm -hmm. in that history, and he said, you know, he rem he said there was many lepers in yes. the time of Naaman. Yes. See all the lepers. Yes. He's talking about all the lepers that was in the church. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm using the church, but he was a lots of lepers in Israel during that time. Mm -hmm. He said, but God only healed one, one. and Naaman. Now Naaman wasn't part of that. That's, that's like God said, I, you know, I'm going to heal somebody outside of the church. Y'all worshiping there, but y'all ain't right. I'm going to heal somebody else. And you in the church sick, but I'm going to heal some sinner out of here. And then he says that. He says there was many widows. Yes. In the time yes. of Elijah. He said, but, 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 you know, the prophet only came to her, mm -hmm. showed her those miracles. Yes. The Bible says at that point, they yes. grabbed him. Yes. Took him to the end of the city to throw him off, off a, a cliff. cliff. Wow. Because the truth. they told him the truth. See, that's that pressure. Don't and, tell and, us, and don't tell us the truth now. You, they knew the word. They knew it was true. 
Oh, yeah. That's what made them mad. And, 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 and they <laughs> gnash it upon him with their teeth. Yes. Wanted, wanted, wanted to kill him for telling the truth. And people get mad at you when you tell the truth. People get upset. And I'm not just talking about um, just a little perturbed. They are fighting mad. They, yes. they want yes. to kill you for telling the truth. And, and Jesus here, he tells them the truth. He doesn't back off of it. And and this man, this man born blind, he begins to tell them truth too. And he doesn't back off his story. And so you got to be able to speak truth and not back off your story. When, you, when you're speaking truth, you got to speak loud and be, you know, used to say stuff like, I'm black and I'm proud. You know, you got to speak loud. You got to, you got to, you got to say something on the Lord's behalf. You cannot cower down. You cannot shun, be shunned to the point where you don't say what God has for you to say. There, there are so many right now who will, who are thinking that I just don't, I'm not going to say anything. Right. If I just don't say anything, I'm not a part of it. I'm not in it. You know, yeah. I'm not. No, there's I'm not, other. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not I'm, guilty. I'm not guilty. I'm not taking this down. I'm Sin, not taking a side. Silence make you guilty. You silence are guilty. is consent. Yeah, because you, gives you consent. are guilty by not <laughs> not holding up the truth. And Jesus Jesus exposed them. No, that, that they didn't they didn't want to be exposed. But Jesus said, you know, uh, they was they was using the word of God incorrectly. They was used the word of God to keep from taking care of their aging parents. They were used the word of God in, in, instead of supporting their parents like, like the word of God told us, honor your mother and your father. They would use the word of God and say, you know what, we're going to give that to God so mama ain't got nothing for you. I can't, you know, they, they was using that and Jesus brought that out. That made them angry. That made them angry mm -hmm. because Jesus dealt with all those skeletons. All those skeletons in the closet, and they didn't want to deal with that. They didn't want to deal with the truth, mm -hmm. and the truth made them very, very angry. So we're living in a day and time of very, very tumultuous. We're living in unprecedented times, and brothers and sisters, it's time for us to pray like never before. Mm -hmm. It's time for us to ask God to open our eyes so we can see. Yes. So we can see, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we want him to open our eyes so we can see this blind man born blind. Jesus opened his eyes. And one thing we have to understand, there are consequences to seeing, because when you start seeing, not only are there consequences, seeing obligates you to speak truth. Mm -hmm. See, before he could, you know, he didn't, he didn't have the truth. He was blind. Once he got able to see, he said, wait a minute. He recognized something wrong with this picture. Right. He says, it's a good work been done. It's a good work been done. Why are y'all angry? Why are y'all mad? I, I got my sight back. You can see. You can see physically. Now that I can see physically, I can not only see physically, I, my, my physical sight has even re helped me, re helped some things be revealed to me spiritually. Yes, yes. That, that if you think that this person who opened my physical sight is of the devil, is, is evil, and you got your sight, but you was okay with me when I didn't have my sight. Because I could lead you then. It's something wrong with this picture. I could lead you. I didn't, when I married you, I didn't mean for you to have an opinion. You didn't have an opinion when you were dating. Now I married you, now you got your own opinion. And that's why, that's sometimes the reason why we can't get along with our kids. Because as long as they're a little bit of kids, you know, whatever we said went. When they get older, they got their own opinions. They started getting to be preteens and teens. And we thought, oh, they're teenagers. Mm -hmm. Well, they got their own opinion. You know, you can't lead them now. They can see. You got to do something else different. You got to talk and talk. You got you to gotta come and, and not just say, do as I say now. Mm -hmm. People looking for evidence. People looking for, okay, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? You know, there's people been doing stuff for decades. For I mean, for decades. People been doing stuff for decades and and they will not be able to tell you why they're doing it they just doing it they just doing it no rhyme no reason to it no progress they just doing it just doing it right and now you live in a generation where knowledge has exploded knowledge has increased and people they want an explanation and folks get angry when you want an explanation 
They want to get very, very angry. You just ask them, why, why we do that? <laughs> you know, why we do that? You know, why do we have to do this? That's just a simple question. That's not rebellion. They just asking for an answer. But, but, and one thing I've learned about fear, one thing I've learned about fear, First Lady, is that when fear is there, when fear is there, insecurities, it'll make you attack because you are afraid. You are afraid. And one thing that, that many times in religious uh, circles, people are afraid uh, for you to ask a question because they don't have an answer. Mm -hmm. They don't even know why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. And when you ask why, since I don't know why I'm doing it and I don't have an answer, I'm going to get mad at you. I'm going to attack you and make, make you think it's your problem when it's not. It's my fear, my insecurities. And they put this man out. But you know what? Jesus found him. Yes. And and it's, it, it's, it's a point where when people put you out, when people reject you, when people don't do right by you. Yes. The Lord, I like how the psalmist even says, when my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Yeah. You, you got to understand... When you do right, when you do what God called you to do, God will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will not drop you. He will not kick you to the curb. He will not put you out. He will not excommunicate. He will bring you closer. And so we see them taking this man, kicking him out of the synagogue, making him excommunicating, making him really kind of isolate and be out there by himself. But he really wasn't by himself. The Lord found him. The Lord will find you and I. The Lord will bless you and I. He will pick us back up. And this blind man, he testifies. He he doesn't care who who the who the people are, who the religious leaders are. He tells them the truth. He shares what God has done with him. And you and I, we must share what God has done for us. We cannot we cannot hold our peace. Not at this time. This is not the time to be quiet. This is not the time to be silent. This is not the time to shut up, cower down, or back down. This is the time to say what thus saith the Lord. This is the time to open our mouths and shout on the mountaintops. It's, this is our time to um, blow the trumpet in Zion. When you blow a trumpet, you're sounding an alarm. When you're blowing a trumpet in Zion, you are proclaiming and declaring, and you're you're sounding it for everyone to hear. This is not a silent cry. Right. This is right. not a silent cry. This is an open and a public cry to to let people know the Lord is coming back. This is these are the end times. This is the time for us to be ready, to get yes. ready, to yes. stay ready. Yes. This is the time where we pull people out of the fires of hell. This is the time where we share the gospel and the good yes, news of Jesus yes. Christ that Jesus loves people, that he saves, he heals, he delivers, he sets free. He's here for each and every one of us. He wants to trans, trans um, Form our lives. He wants to bless yes. us. He wants to heal us. He, God is here for us, and so we've got to tell tell this good news to everyone we come in contact. That's what we say: share, share, share. You got to understand the power of your share. You got to understand the power of you um, letting someone else know that Jesus saves from the uttermost to the guttermost. God, there's nobody that He cannot reach. There's nobody. This man was born blind. Yes. This man had been in this condition his entire life. You know, people saying, I've been like this all my life. Can't nobody help me. Yeah, God can help you. Right. It doesn't matter how long you've been in sin. It does not matter how out. long you've been in a condition. It does not matter how long you've been in your circumstance. God said he's able to bring us out. He's able to heal us. He's able to touch us. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. And so... God wants us to know, um, tell your testimony, tell it, shout it from the rooftop, shout yes. it from the mountaintop, yes. shout it yes. out, give a, we, we give a shout out to other people, let's shout out what God is saying, let's shout out his word, let's shout out um, of the goodness of the Lord, and be thankful about it, this is Thankful Thursday. <laughs> All that he's done for us, in, we want to be thankful. In everything we give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. Yes. So God is good to us, and we have a special service tonight for the millennials. 
uh, North Little Rock. Uh, we're going to come with our mask and the safety protocols that we have with all the plexiglass. And we got something. We're getting ready to deploy. We're getting ready to deploy. We come in. We come in. We come in to, to get ready to deploy and position ourselves for a mighty move of God. Position ourselves to help those that need us. You know, the one thing that I, I think that all of us uh, can embrace one of the sayings uh, is that God didn't bring us into the world for us to leave the world the way we found it. Okay. We don't want to leave it like we found it. Right. You know, we know we're pilgrims, we're strangers, we come here and we're going to leave and we're going to be with the Lord forever. But while we're here, it is time to do spiritual warfare, spiritual battles. So uh, looking forward to all of seeing all the millennials today uh, at, at 630 at the North Lorette location as we're getting ready to deploy and we're getting ready to move in the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. And don't yield to the pressure and don't allow yourself to be brainwashed. You know, the Bible says when the, when the man of sin comes, the climate is going to be so set that the Bible says the whole world will go after him. Yeah. Everybody going to follow him mm -hmm. because they have been they have been conditioned to be blind and to follow. Wow. So we're thankful to God that wow. he gives us light. And we want to be like that blind man. We can see now. You should have came much earlier when we was blind. You can't lead us now. Once that man got his eyes open, he's looking at them. And he was more righteous than all those folks in that room that was the religious leaders. So God bless you. Amen. God keep you tonight, 630 millennials. In the morning, First Lady, we got what? 530? Yes, 530. 530 prayer. We've got an appointment. <laughs> 530. Make the appointment at 530 a.m. in the morning. Um, you don't want to miss it on the prayer line. Um, interceding and reaching the throne of, of grace and being able to um, fellowship and commune and sit at God's feet and being able to just hear um, the Lord speak to us early in the morning. Early will early I seek thee. Early will we seek thee. Yes. And so God will meet us. If we make that appointment, God will meet us. Okay? Amen. Amen. So, um, Amen. Don't forget the 8 a.m. Um, Fearless Friday on in the morning at 8 a.m. You don't want to miss Fearless Friday. Rewind and recap. Um, share it with somebody. Tell somebody. Um, we kind of recap and go over what we've talked about for the week. Um, don't you don't want to miss that? Also on are we are we skipping since we're doing. What are we doing? We're not doing. We're not doing um, Zoom tomorrow. We're doing what Pastor just said. <laughs> doing Facebook. So we're doing okay. Facebook Live at eight o'clock. Is that what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. And then, then at uh, eight p.m., we have the Millennials uh, on online. Uh -huh. Okay, that's what I was talking about. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. we're doing today and tomorrow. Okay, yes, so, yes. so so I just don't want to get us confused. We are both doing, we're doing both millennials for this evening, and we're gonna we're not we're not uh, counseling tomorrow's millennial. We're gonna zoom on um, tomorrow. Uh, that's what I was talking about, not the Facebook live, but the but the millennial zoom on tomorrow as well at eight p.m. Okay. Amen. So Amen. so tonight is. The time for the millennials tonight is 6 30. Yes. But tomorrow night is 8 p.m. on Zoom. Yes. 6 30 at 6 30 the North Little Rock Church. Tonight. Yeah. And then we've been uh, Zooming and Facebooking and all kind of stuff. So uh, <laughs> we we thank God for the privilege that He's given unto us to be able to use the airways, to be able to use what God has given unto us. That is a blessing from the Lord. And we we are right where you are. And we want you to be safe. Mm -hmm. And we are yes. praying for you. We're mm -hmm. praying for your families. We're yes. praying during this very difficult time. Praying for those that have lost loved ones, mm -hmm. multiple loved ones. Uh, Thanksgiving will be different this year. Christmas will be different this year. 
but rest assured the God of all comfort will be able to comfort you. He knows how to do that. He knows how to comfort every emotion that he's given unto you. He knows that we are but dust. He knows that we are flesh and blood. He knows us. He knows us. He can be touched yes. by the feelings of our Thank infirmities. You, Thank you. So he is not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. That's not in his character. That's not something he would ever do. So during this holiday season, during this time, rest assured that God is going to be with us. And we love you. And we thank God for you tuning in. God bless you. God Amen. bless you. Amen. And we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have an awesome and thankful Thursday.